Hey everyone, Genome here, coming to you with the next episode in my Great Reads series. So I haven't known one of these in a little while, and uh, I've been feeling kind of remiss in, in not doing so. So I figured I'd go ahead and jump in with one of my all-time favorite books, and I just recently had to repurchase it again. But uh, let's go ahead and get on to the book, and then maybe a little bit more about it. So I'm talking about none other than A Rumor of War by Philip Caputo. Uh, I actually just bought this again. This, I used to have this in paperback. I think I got it for a quarter or something at a garage sale. And I bet I've read this book 30 times. Um, but, you know, it's, it's funny. This is, this is a book about Vietnam. And the last time I had this book is right before I went off the basic training. And I left all my books behind with my roommates at the time. And, uh, well, they're not going to hold on to books for very long. So, long story short, I don't got them anymore. So, uh, I went ahead and repurchased uh, this book because it's... Uh, it's just an amazing read, and it's really an important read, too. Uh, once again, uh, the author's name is Philip Caputo, and he was a second raw second lieutenant in the Marine Corps uh, who volunteered and went over to Vietnam right at the outset of hostilities for the most part. So what follows is a tale of a platoon commander and um, basically a, a company... Uh, you know, lieutenant there, basically the guy's on the ground, <laughs> uh, leading uh, patrol missions, uh, keeping his men, you know, focused on the war and at uh, like at the at the encampments and all that. I'm sorry, I haven't. I'm trying to remember the lingo they use exactly. It's a little bit different than the army lingo. Uh, basically, keeping bivouac sites uh, safe, you know, securing facilities and just being on endless patrols. Um, this book kind of runs a gamut of wartime emotions for the foot soldier, right? Because he was out there slogging around in the mud with the rest of them. And uh, he paints a picture so vividly of the environment they were in. And it also is a great chronicle of basically innocence lost. Uh, he was a young man, full of ideals, and he answered the call. And he went over there, and he came out of a changed man. Uh, There's some acts in there. Um, that really it almost took away his freedom and uh, he watched friends uh, and, and and cohorts and comrades uh, you know die around him be maimed and also watched them all lose their illusions of you know the happy war and um, you know happy warriors these were not you know they go in like said full of promise and hope and then Vietnam just beat them down relentlessly and um, it's just a great book of warning too if you really get down to thinking about it uh not to get caught up in quagmires in which we have no business <laughs> there's some maybe a lesson to be learned here in the last 25 years or so right uh, of which i was a part too no figure but uh, i didn't go through anything anything even remotely close to what this guy went through and, and his troops as well so and basically anyone who was in vietnam you know it was a totally different kind of warfare and um you know they were living by the seat of their pants a lot of times but really, it's just, it's, the book is an emotional powerhouse, and really, I think better than any movie that's ever made about the conflict, it really gives a picture in your mind of what it looked like over there and what it was like to go out on these patrols, you know? Every day, it's going to be the same thing. You go out on a what seems to be a useless patrol <laughs> to take a useless hill or clear out a village that will just get reinfested by VC again the very next day. It just shows the utter pointlessness of a lot of their missions and the mounting dread that these Marines, soldiers, and whoever else was wandering out there, Navy corpsmen and all that too, uh, would have to learn to live with. You know, every day just walking becomes uh, a threat to your life and limb, and that's not even an exaggeration, you know. So it's just, uh, it's an amazing thing. You can, you can feel the heat baking off like the jungle canopy in the floor right from his descriptions you can feel like the the stagnant water they had to sl you know slush through i mean you can see like the scout in your mind roving ahead to look for booby traps and that sort of thing it's just a, it's an incredibly vivid book uh written by an author with some real skill not only uh skill in writing itself but skill in recollection i mean he wrote this book quite a while after his experience there and it's just all vivid as day and it shows you what such such an indelible mark it made on him and uh, i really just can't recommend this book enough uh it's probably the best 
book about war that I've ever read, and it's not uh, the kind of book that glorifies any battles. I mean, there's really no glory to be had in here. The only glory was getting out alive in one piece, right? <laughs> that was the glory. That was the reward of, of a war well fought, right? At least on the uh, typical uh, soldier slash marine slash, you know, uh, sailor kind of thing, right? But just just an amazing book and a highly, highly, highly recommended uh, read. It's not too bad. It's only about 400 pages. Don't uh, let the thickness scare you. You are going to learn a lot of acronyms, though, military acronyms, too. So there is that. You, it's, learning is fun, right, kids? But uh, can't recommend the book enough. If you have read this book, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of it. And if you ha are planning on reading it, let me know after you get done reading it and see uh, you know, see if I was a way off base or if I was actually on to something here. So anyway, I'm going to go wrap it up there. Once again, the book is A Rumor of War by Philip Caputo, and it definitely is very deserving of Genome's Great Reads uh, category. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more literary content, movie content, music content, live stream content. It's just a smorgasbord of content coming at you. So stay tuned for more of that. And until next time, this is Genome. Just hoping our country doesn't make the same mistake ever again.